There was a funny yeah. thing happened at Gimmie's Bar not too long ago in Brentfield, and we talked about good talking about the formation of the club and all that. And, and Mickey says, I just kept the jerseys. He says, Look at that. Don't bother us to go. You can say, it, it, it'll go start it. Club, sure. yeah. But the other man that were, needed a lot of praise too was Paddy McAnulty. And Jim McGrath too. In 1970, Greencastle minor team beat Stewartstown by three points in the championship final. That's right. Uh, and there's one kind of senior title, isn't that? We didn't play well again, I bought all. 72, we're sorry, one in the junior league. I remember that. Tina Sally was playing for Oma. Tina has made the match in Newton that we played only in the first first team. Do you mean that? Five years after it started, there was there was a decision taken to look at the ground. We played, remember the year that we played Cookstown in the league in Cookstown? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I mean that. The point was awarded the wrong way. No, 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 no way. In nineteen seventy six, uh, Greencastle senior team made the, the junior league cup final. The three were Kelly Club on the first day. Aye. Yeah. And the betters. Easily the second day. Well, Christian must have been 78. Played two, wasn't it? Aye, there was a draw, wasn't it, Christian? I mean, there was something about two men being put off and didn't go off. Aye. But made a free play it. And then the oh. Not much of note happened in 1979, but a thing that happened was the all county leagues changed from five leagues to three leagues, moving Greencastle up to Division 3. The four schools were Castle, yes. Green Castle, Croc, and Brickyard okay. closed. I suppose the other big thing that probably happened in 1980 was uh, the big carnival. It started by carnival. Oh, it's a video, yeah. Yes. Fund. Does that mean that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Logan won the year of racing. That's right. The many of them. He he was was sure that. But he put Johnny Logan as soon as he won the year of racing. Ah. Oh, I, there was the first date. There was the first date that he ever done after he won. The year of racing was awesome. Well, awesome. Well, it was the first. It was the first book he done anyway. Ah, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was like was on at that stage, but uh, local London, I mean, you know all the bike off first. That's a champion. There was a boy riding for you. There's nothing like Johnny Logan. There's Maggie Higgs. Maggie Higgs. Damn bike, damn bike, damn Johnny Logan. He's got a fucking bike off. Playing Lally, it's too much familiarity, I suppose, really. Uh-huh. And, uh, and, and the, before the major game, we did them a team or two earlier in the year and then played them in Gorton Tournament. And I remember famous on Sunday, Candy Boys, and Lars at Brides. Mon Ward was settled the same day. And, and, and Paul topped up the field, and the boy ran like hell, and McBride ran Paul topped up. <laughs> and Brandon landed on the right to the center, and he says, Hey, boys, where's the balls? And Pat, Give him a ball, and he said, "What the fuck? Fuck this!" And he went over to the back of the wagon, opened it, and took out a bag of balls. He was lavvy at the time. Yeah, very. Right. That's the way. There were lavvies footballs with lavvy rolled on them. Uh-huh. One ball. Don't clue. Uh, Pat Lawrence is up now too. I think Pat won the great one. Seventy uh, eight. We could have won the double that year, I think. Uh, in 1983, was the first Camogie club formed here in Greencastle. Uh, the first game was against Barra and Malik College Sale. We had to actually gather up the hay in the field before we started. Barra and us both. The first thing we done then was push for the seeds. This is for the grounds. For the grounds. 1985. Why didn't we put the chapel? I know at the time that the was here, there was a lot of money spent, like the chapel was spent, Green Castle was renovated, Trophy House was renovated, school was finished, and then the pay was in place. In 1985, the under-14 Camogie team won the championship final against Doma. In 1986, the community games. <coughs> then we went on to, uh, the under-14 team reached the throne final and were defeated by Arbo. It was then the big year then, was 1988. Well, there was a lot of work when you picked that plant, you know. I was... Because... Eh, there's work in that. I don't know if there's any strange that either. That's right, Jennifer, the first time. Uh, it was, you know, who you get, what you get, where you get them from, yeah. uh, what you're going to do in the day. Oh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 
Well, Diane's for Logan, she already had 16 around the Rams. Do I enter own selection? That's right. Uh, I, you see, when, uh, when we had the best day, we, we were going to, you know, make a, an error or go at the on the age. Now, the under 16 was the, we had another team, you know, we had an under 16 team, or 14. But anyway, the gears all enjoyed it, even though they were a bit. Uh, we went on then to the community games. And that was in 80, 90? 80, 80, 89. 89. Um, we got Ulster, we represented Throne in the Ulster final, and I got, got beat, I think, in the final of it that day. Right. Um, community games, of course, was under 13 was in town. Um, I was um, to do. You made a great example of one of those finals. I made the two worst games I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Yeah, yeah. I'm big Tony McGinnis, Mark. Uh, I've got a name I can see. Big gun fighting or big gun. You were traditionally the one who it would always been a ladies team, but it was for the Martin Harshan tournament and local sports days. Uh, because no ladies team could affiliate until 1991. No, and then, that's, yeah, and then there was an advert in the paper. Looking for ladies teams? No, looking for ladies. For, they started at Noma, and Alice Tracy and Jackie McElhatton and me went. Oh, really? And then we went to Ladies All Ireland that year, and then we met the chairperson or the president of the Ladies Gaelic Association, and then that's when it started. One seven eight points. One seven. Mark Daly with the goals. That's right. So, so somebody was said. <laughs> <laughs> We're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard that. Did <laughs> 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 you check my name? I heard that. Uh, no, in fairness to Mark, like it was, it was a, it was a good goal. Like it was a well worked goal. That goal come the whole way up from the bottom of the, the bottom of the field all in succession. Because I'll tell you the move, Morris Bradley kicked it up then to me, I can still see it this day. And I kicked it into John Hollywood, he came running out, picked up the ball, flicked it to BT, BT went through, flicked it over to Mark, back at it. Yeah, this uh, quarter we final, play, we played Castle Derrick, was it? Castle Derrick, semi final. Semi final. Down to our team, he bought that ring, he uh, never got a card. Uh, <laughs> I got a card. <laughs> In 1995 and 1996, not much again of note happened, but I suppose the big thing is that Greencastle remained in intermediate football. We had a night at the races in Gallagher's pub in Mountfield. We raised a thousand pound. We thought we were <laughs> loaded. <Pass. and> loaded. <laughs> <laughs> and then we bought the jerseys. Success on the field of play followed with the club's first Ulster title, albeit Bally Kenler Junior Shavins competition under the management of Sean Clark and captaincy of Tommy McDermott. In 1989, our miners also secured a championship title by defeating Derry Lohan again in the final under the management team of Mo Bradley and John Hollywood. The time was um, obviously open. That was 1989. That was 1989. Sean McCabe was the president at the time. Two thousand. That was on the uh, minor team. You trained with Kathy, your captain, whenever the minor championship runners up and made it to the league semi final in two thousand. Got that team either, but got her down there and to manage to help them out. A lot of up here the cup and you should make him and you know if they can. Well, I'm not here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Two calories. First time making Clark done was grab me by the shoulder. Back in the knees, stayed away, stayed away to the road. We were back, had, had a senior team again, and then we were playing on McCrory in the final of the championship, and they beat us. And then, but we won the league. 2002, 2001 we won the league, 2002 we won the double, yeah, and intermediate, yeah, and then we moved up to senior and we maintained our status in senior in 2003 and I think 2004, because we were way up the table and in 2003. We had a good wee run that year that we did the double. And the Ulster, and also dry there. Spare Nogue returned in 2003 to win the Grade 2 Minor League and Championship. The team was captained by Emer Teague and managed by Mickey Beggs and Claire Tracy. Park and you know, and uh, just remember 
very young girl too. He played at that time. Um, John McCullough, obviously, Sean Warren, Arnsley, um, was probably the best player at that time. Mark Carson, yeah. Gilbert. I think he pulled the hamstring that day. We'll move on off the 2006 was a massive year for the Sons of Last Week. 2006 was very good. It was a bad day for him. Just zoom in. 2006 was a bad day. Other things of note in 2008 were Sparrow Oak Miners won the championship and Greencastle Under 16s also won the championship. 2008, the Under 16s made the, the Grade 3 championship final and they played uh, Clan de Gale down in Glenelg. So it was one of the big things I remember from that game was Cahar McCullough's goal. He struck the ball from probably about 25, 30 yards out and it came off the crossbar. And I just remember coming running straight on and again catching the ball in mid-flight and just putting it in the back of the net. I think it was probably one of the best goals I've ever seen from a player. We reformed again in 2009 with the 125th anniversary of the GA. We decided then to name the team instead of Greencastle Cone Cup. The following was we decided we'd name the team as, as Father Shields Cone Cup as is. I remember um, going up to Berra, it was me and Aideen thinking we were going up with teammates and we ended up playing each other in the oh. final. <laughs> <laughs> and then from that there I remember going on to play with, or down in Kevin. I remember me and Mummy getting lost, there was a fallout. <laughs> Eventually got there, I was just thrown, no in, no, <laughs> thrown into the court with this girl I've never seen before, never played with before. And was told out, Neve Clark, yeah, I was told out playing doubles with her. We ended up winning it. That was my first year ever to, to win Troon um, Score. I've been competing in since 2008. 2010 was a fantastic year for the senior ladies. Um, we won the, the junior championship. The senior team had a fantastic 2011 as well. Obviously with the start of it, being in an all Ireland semi-final. So do you mind much about then the all Ireland semi-final? I, I still remember watching you run straight through and scoring your goal. <laughs> like, like. You haven't seen mine. Anytime we want something away, we always like, make sure we throw through our court. And then we were very lucky, and that's it, but I the third ballot group. We won that year. On the funny ones there, dude. Where are your first socks? Dad? I've seen you park doing one. Filed. Before the final. I left it up, mate. You did? Don't pass me. Don't pass me chapter. The boys are big after I've done all year. I'm probably going to end there Thursday night. In 
2013, Spare and Oak won the Grade 1 Minor Championship title. Heroes, you don't come home. Here they lie in Belgian fields. 2014 then. Back to the league. Back to the league. Lost one game, whole league. Up here. Thought we'd lost the league and then get the steer down there. 2014 then we had the opening of the 3G pitch up at the hall and Michelle O'Neill who actually came up to open the pitch for us. I suppose then in 2015 it was back to the Fela, the on 14 Fela team were the runners up. I had a minor team, I remember. I remember sitting down, Warnock says we'll take that team. I remember they were joined with Owen Kill or Badone or Owen Kill you at number 16 so he took them in for a minor. And fucking went around and turned one to double. On the 15 Oaks board, Mihal and Canelia or some on the 15 players that team run about him. Jesus. Oh. One and two? One no sport, aye. They were, they were definitely were, they were unlimited touches, hey, and it was starting goals and took turns of goals, and it was more or less on the field each day, hey. It was, they were wild strong. Dermot Devlin submitted to one of the photographs for him in Crow Park for the Iron Grid scoreboard competition, and we were extremely lucky in that we won the competition, and the, the club was gifted a new electronic scoreboard. Health and well being within the club, and Fiona Teig, particularly had a big input in the GAA Healthy Clubs recognition that the club received in 2017. I wonder if you're double that last year, like when Paddy Michael Hatton came quite up with the weirdness coming off for years there, flicking some spinners. I was strong as everything. And you still call about to stand about the word playing, like if it's all good as your players. Not long after starting the handball in the club again, in 2018, Cashlin Tracy and Saoirse Hughes were very successful in the Tyrone doubles, um, obviously winning the county title. Father Shields finished the, the 2019 season on a real high with Nalakra under 16 team, uh, beating Derry Lachlan in the Anne Jordan Memorial Plate final. I suppose the, the final big success of 2019 for the Green Kissing Club was winning the reserve championship final. I would just like to take this opportunity now on behalf of Cash and Glass, August Sparrow and Oak. To thank you all for coming tonight to help us celebrate 50 continuous years in existence and we hope to celebrate many many more.